As much as I love the barbell row and will always be grateful for the amazing yo gains it provided, I barely do them these days. And in this video, I'll be giving you the exact reasons why. So let me first state that it is an amazing exercise that has built so many backs, myself included. You used to see me do well over 300 pounds on the cheat row, and when I would keep it shred, it would be somewhere in the mid 200s, or low if you wanna call it perfect form. And so I always responded well to it, and it specifically helped my deadlift performance. And that's probably one of the major reasons why you should do it as well. That said, you have to ask yourself, why are you rowing? What are your number one goals? In my case, I try to maintain a balance of all movement patterns. So if I'm doing a lot of horizontal presses, I want the equivalent volume in horizontal pulls, sometimes even more. And the thing is, I'm doing this specifically for upper back hypertrophy to prevent kyphotic posture and look yoked. See, if you're doing a tremendous amount of good mornings, Romanian deadlifts, regular deadlifts for low repetitions or even high volume, maybe doing everything combined, you have to ask, by throwing in barbell rows, could that potentially cause recovery issues or if it doesn't, are you perhaps working your spinal rectors a little bit more than you actually need to? Is it necessary to involve your lower back while you're doing horizontal pull to begin with? And if the area itself is already taxed, can we say that maybe, just maybe, doing a row that involves your lower back less makes more sense from a programming standpoint, the synergy of lifts? Not that we drop, the free way to rows completely, we can still do chest supported or incorporate the dumbbell version, but you're rowing to build your upper back, right? At least most of you are. Why not do a variation that has a better stimulus to fatigue ratio? Especially since a lot of you are going to end up cheating when the weight gets heavy enough, which does have benefits like way to stretch overload, which is why I'm not dismissing the idea, but as a standard row that you're going to be doing the majority of times, I'd rather you do something a little bit stricter if that's gonna be the majority of your volume is what I'm saying. So let's not hear some straw man arguments here, all right? In this case, cable rows, dumbbell rows, inverted rows are superior choices because you're not gonna beat down the lower back in any type of way and now you can properly attack the upper back without form breakdown occurring. And if it does happen, it's gonna be minimal compared to the swing that might occur on a barbell row. In most cases, I see guys turn the movement into a Yates row to which their body is completely upright, or they incorporate so much body English by maximizing the hip hinge action itself. They're literally doing a hybrid movement. And probably that's why people get such great carryover to deadlifts. Look at Kayla Woolen with his cheat row philosophy. It works. No one's gonna deny that. It worked for me too. But is that why you're rowing? Or do you just wanna be jacked in the upper back? And the thing is too, what if the deadlift Warner Max is not your main goal, but rather the Warner Max way to pull up, which is exactly how I'm training at this moment. In this case, you have to understand that barbell rows are not specific towards building that lift. You'd be much better off, and I must stress, you'd be better off doing an inverted row. Even though it's a horizontal pull, it has something that a barbell row can never offer. It's close chain that automatically makes it more specific. Not to mention the fact that it'll help your other body weight moves or if you're leaning back on your pull-ups. You wanna get better at sternum pull-ups? Inverted rows are gonna help with that. Skill work like the front lever or heck, something even more specific like doing front lever rows. You won't get that level of performance without training in those similar joint angles, pulling your own body weight up. So if you're trying to pull four plates like me and most of your program consists of vertical pulls, maybe you're throwing in one horizontal, what are you gonna stress? A barbell row? Nah, man, do an inverted row, it's more specific. And then if you wanna hit one more, it could be free weighted, but why do you have to hit your lower back super hard? Especially if you're going hard on your deadlifts and good mornings. Now, if you're being lazy on that, yeah, you should probably do a barbell row. But if your program is already balanced and you can confidently say that all your muscles have been addressed with the proper workload, man, you don't have to load your low back more and possibly end up doing these extra cheat reps because you're so fatigued from everything in your routine. Just saying. This has happened so many times in most of the programs that I've seen out there, especially 
when you become an advanced lifter. Because now your default is not being in the 100s. Unless you're doing very high volume. And that's another strategy that can override this. But if you want to stick to reps of 20 or doing the pause, having to introduce all these techniques, use a different variation that automatically drops your repetitions. That's it. It's what I do. My back is looking swole right now. You can be the judge for yourself. I'm not doing any chi rows and very little barber rows right now. And because I'm still getting stronger at all these poles, guess what? The carryover to the barbell row is still high. But now I'm getting more specific with the calisthenics. You see what I'm saying? The only trade-off I would say is you get slightly less benefits to your deadlift. That's it. But even then, you can run a program that has you doing barbell rows once a week and the rest is high frequency, high volume, other rows. Doesn't have to be the main pull for every single workout is what I'm saying. So don't live in black and white thinking. Use the exercise if you want to. But ask yourself honestly, why in the f*** are you rowing? You know the answer. So start training in a way that reflects what you're actually thinking like. Instead of copying the dogma of so many strength athletes out there. Let's not appeal to traditional what works. Let's just look at our objectives and cater our programming needs towards that. Sounds good? That's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let's see your feedback in the comment section. And I'll talk to you all next time.